Good morning, everybody. We have such an exciting day ahead of us. We can't wait to share it with you. But first, the animals need to be let out. Feed the boy goats and check on the girl goats. Good morning, goats. Good morning. You hungry? Good morning! Did you have a good night? Oh, you're still sleeping? Annabelle is still sleeping with her mama. I know the pigs need food this morning. I didn't fill it last night because we got rain overnight and sometimes their feeder leaks just a little bit. So fill it up this morning. Good morning pigs. Oh, you guys still have some food. I'll give you more anyway. I'm so happy with the way the pigs are looking. Man, they're doing good. While all of the animals are out and doing fine, we have a big adventure today. Uh, we are going to look at our first family milk cow. Uh, we found an ad on Craigslist. Uh, we've been communicating with the person for a little bit of, that has her, and we think that this may be a good fit for our homestead. This cow is a Jersey, and we've been looking for a Jersey, so that's awesome. Her name is Hope. She is six years old, which is a little bit older than we were hoping for, but it may actually work to our advantage that she's a little older with a little bit more experience. 
She has always been a family milk cow. She hasn't been on a dairy, which is something that we were hoping for. She's used to being around people. Uh, she's used to being hand milked and machine milked. And the best part is that her milk has been tested and it's A2, A2 milk. So we're totally excited to see if this is going to be the perfect fit for our homestead. We're gonna get cleaned up and head out. They're about an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes away, so we need to get going. So this is something I learned when I transitioned from goats to cows. Other than the fact that they produce a lot more. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, when you're milking the, the cow itself, she may take about a week to get used to you. For the first week or so, have a bucket ready. Okay. Because she's getting used to you, she may be a little nervous, and that'll make them have to go to the bathroom. Okay. Mm. So about a week, they're gonna poo every time you milk. Okay. And it's a pain, because it's a mess. Sometimes they'll even pee when they do it. Right. Okay. But all I do is I just have a bucket ready and I just hold catch it up it. there. Yeah. I just hold it and catch it. Okay. Not to be disgusting, no, but hey. hey, I would rather tell you ahead of time because cow poo will splatter. Yeah, she is a very big cow, um, but she's such an easy keeper, honestly. I mean, jerseys typically are on the bony side. And yeah. Yeah. She was a wonderful mother. It's, there was no need for assistance or anything like that. I came out here um, and I was like, ooh, I think she's getting close, but we had to go to town. Mm -hmm. And when I got back from, from being in town, there she was. I mean, it was, uh -huh. oh, awesome. Because in fact, we got back and my husband's like, I think you have an extra critter out there. <gasps> Let me go run it out. Sure enough. And, uh, she already had her pretty much dry mm -hmm. and up and nursing and everything. So, I mean, I didn't have to do anything. Now, when you don't have calves on her, do you have any idea how many gallons she's make, producing a day? When, when she first freshened, I was getting three gallons. Mm -hmm. With one baby on With her. one baby on her. Mm -hmm. um, so, she's probably doing a gallon and a half to two gallons would be my guess. Mm -hmm. And she had her baby when? January. Okay. And she might be pregnant, you said, right? She might, but you guys had said you would probably pick her up in a couple weeks, so I'll just put her back in the bowl and okay. get her. She's been tested A2, A2. Okay. okay. Um, that was important to us. That's the whole reason I bought her. Okay. I was looking for an A2. Mm -hmm. If you're unfamiliar with A2 milk, uh, there's different classifications of milk. Milk is composed of um, probably about 80% water. And then the remaining 20% is lactose, which most people are familiar with, mm -hmm. is the milk sugar. And uh, interestingly enough, a lot of times when people think that they're lactose intolerant, there's only about 20% of the population that are actually lactose intolerant. Mm -hmm. And that is that there's an enzyme that your stomach produces that as babies it produces, and then as we get older, we tend to produce less of it. Um, so most of the time it's just an enzyme, and you can take digestive enzymes if you have problems with lactose. Mm -hmm. But the reality when people have trouble with milk is the other part of the milk is the milk protein. And protein is divided into the alpha, beta, and kappa cassian. The beta cassian can be classified in, as A1 or A2. A2 is your old world genetics. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, the original that does not cause the body to um, become inflamed. Mm -hmm. Typically, pe people who have trouble with milk mm -hmm. when they do raw a2 milk they have no problems whatsoever so it's kind of interesting that way awesome um so that's kind of one of the reasons why a2 is important unfortunately about 90 percent of commercial u.s dairy is a1 right uh, partly because of the genetics they've been breeding the cows for production mm -hmm. rather than um, the health of the cow so yeah it's just a it's a better it's a better milk
we had a good time today spending some time with Rebecca from Healthy Homestead Living. We had a really good time meeting Hope, and I really think that she is a great cow. You guys, while we were there, we absolutely fell in love with Hope. We have put a down payment on her, and in just a couple of weeks, we're going to bring her home to our homestead. Right. She is going to be our first family milk cow. We're so excited. We really think that she's going to be just the perfect cow for us. She was so personable, so used to being around people. Uh, the girls went with, it, went with us, and she was so comfortable around the girls. Uh, I really just think it's going to be a great fit. We've got a few weeks before we actually bring her home to the homestead. Even though the cow and goat area is all set, there are still a few things that we need to get before we are ready for her. Right. And we're not 100% sure that she's bred, so we've asked Rebecca to put her in with the bull to make sure that she has another opportunity to come into heat and be bred before she comes to the homestead. Right. Even though she's in milk now, we want to make sure that she has another calf in the spring so that we have a good supply of milk here on the homestead. So uh, that'll be exciting that not only are we getting a cow this fall, but in the spring we'll be getting a calf as well. Uh, they're actually breeding her to an Angus bull, so the, so the baby will be half Jersey, half Angus. So we'll be able to raise that for meat and that'll be so exciting. There's still some equipment things that we need to purchase before we bring her home. Uh, we have some round bales of hay ready for her, but we still need to buy a round bale uh, feeder for her. I actually wanted to figure out a way to cover that so that the hay isn't out in the weather quite as much. Because we're only having one cow and the goats, a round bale will last quite a long time. We're thinking that a big round bale of hay will last about a month. So we need some way to keep that out of the rain and everything else, so watch for things updates on that as I figure out ways to do that. Uh, we're also uh, going to get the barn set up so that we're ready to start milking. Just lots of things that we haven't done in the past that we're getting ready to do now. I feel like we've taken the time to really learn what we need to learn uh, as far as a book. Uh, we've spent some time with people now who have been able to show us things and now it's time for us to just get ready to do it. One thing that we are trying to determine is whether or not we're going to hand milk Hope or whether we're going to use a milking machine. When we were talking with Rebecca, she told us that if we were to hand milk her, it would take a good hour to completely empty out her udder. Now, maybe you have a different experience with that, but uh, I wanted to throw out there the question to you all. Um, if you've had experience milking, if you think we can really do it by hand milking or if you suggest using a milking machine. Is it worth the investment to spend money on a milking machine? One of the reasons we're getting the cow is to save money, uh, to save money at the grocery store. We, as those of you who've been following us for a long time know, we don't like to give money to the grocery store if we don't have to. And a cow is one of those things that we really feel will save us money, not cost us money. More about that in the future as we share with you guys how we came up with that decision and how we really decided that a cow was going to be the right thing for our homestead. So lots of things to look forward to you guys. We're so excited for this adventure for our homestead. We're so excited to be sharing that with you and everything that comes along with it. There are lots of new things for us to learn about with this cow. And maybe not all of them good. Some of them, <laughs> we may realize that we've made some, you know, mistakes in our calculations and everything else. But in general, I think we're on the right track. We're headed toward being more self-sufficient, less dependent on the, on the store, and that's exactly what we want to do here on our homestead. You guys, so we're going to wrap up this video today. We're sure glad you stopped by. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and share this with people that you know who would like it. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.